we're just going to have a very quick uh, conversation uh, with three companies that are also Nucos, who are part of the founding of uh, Nuco. That some of them are, um, I don't know, some of you guys are in the audience, or are you all back here? Oh, you're here, good. All right, I'm, I'm going to completely get this wrong, Huda. But Huda Edris? Idris, I was very close, is the head of product and design at Wealth Simple, which is changing uh, the financial um, management industry. You guys just come along as I speak. Alan Lau is the CEO and co-founder of Wattpad, which is a really extraordinary um, fi fan fiction and fiction um, uh, platform. And Sam Sebastian is the managing director of Google Canada. You guys have a seat and I'll sit over here. Welcome them. Um, <sighs> Moses is always here. <laughs> um, so uh, I want to start with, I mean, those are some pretty inspiring, uh, uh, you know, presentations that we just heard. So if, if each of you could maybe tell us just in a few minutes what it is you do, what your company does, and maybe uh, how you feel it's a new co. We can start with you, Sam. Uh, Google. <laughs> Anyone heard of it? Uh, <laughs> Our mission is to organize the world's information, but basically we want to change the world. Um, we want to connect as many folks uh, to uh, the internet and to information as possible because when information is free and it's flowing, uh, again, it can change the world. So that's the goal of the company. Uh, we've been in Canada for about 12 years. We have nearly 1,000 employees across four offices around the country, um, and we're trying to change Canada too for the better. Uh, Wattpad is an app that lets our 45 million monthly users to, uh, discover and share stories. Wattpad stories range from science fiction to romance to fan fiction, and we also have a division called Wattpad Studios. Wattpad Studios uh, partner with other entertainment companies such as uh, Turner in the US or uh, TV5 in the Philippines to co-produce uh, popular Wattpad stories for print, TV shows, uh, movie, and other digital platforms. Uh, our company mission is uh, very simple. We want to help more people to read and write more, and uh, that's how we build our network. But we also want to bring entertainment to, to everyone. Our company vision is to um, build a billion user company that uh, brings inspiration and entertainment to those a billion people. Well, Simple's Canada's fastest growing and largest online investment management company. We want to make smart, simple investing accessible to not just Canada, but everyone across the globe. We started just under two years ago, so when you guys come to our office for a new co-event in September, we'll be celebrating our two-year anniversary this year. We've raised $32 million to date. Um, we managed just, um, just over half a billion dollars in assets and have 17,000 clients uh, to date, and we want to take it across the globe. Proudly Canadian. I think it's interesting. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, I mean, there, there, there are new codes that are very small and very focused. Um, like I showed you the Michigan Urban Farming Initiative, which is really about Detroit and, and cities in, in Michigan. Um, but you're starting a, a platform that you want to take all over the world, and uh, Wattpad's already there, right? 45 million uniques a month. Now, still quite a few hundred millions away from a billion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, a, you're a couple hundred million away from a billion, but is that a goal? Yeah, that, that's a uh, publicly stated goal, yeah. a billion audience. It's funny that the largest company represented here is, in fact, you, focused on, you, you, you know, the organization of Google is, well, we gotta, we gotta be in a country, and that's, is that mainly because there's a polity, there's a legal framework, and there's, you know, you need to be locally driven? What's the, what's the purpose of Google Canada as distinct from Google? Um, probably two things. Number one, uh, great talent, great engineering talent. So we've got um, almost 500 engineers in Kitchener-Waterloo. We have 75 in Montreal, uh, and we try to find great talent where there are great universities and, and um, a great engineering pipeline. So Canada is a great source of talent, so that's why we're here. But then, I've been at Google for 10 years, I was in the US for eight, um, and I've been up here running this operation for two. Uh, in the end, it's all about relationships. So, so we, we're an ads-driven model, we built great products for consumers, but to fund that, uh, it's advertising. And 
Um, you can't do that over the phone. You can't do that um, from Mountain View. You have to build relationships in the local market, uh, in every uh, local market throughout Canada, and that's why we've been successful the last 10 plus years. But um, in order to continue to be successful, we have to be in the communities uh, that we serve. Makes sense. Alan, how does the geographic distribution lay out for, for Wattpad? Yeah, it's, it's very diverse. Uh, a quarter of our traffic coming from North America and then another quarter uh, from Latin America, um, another quarter from Europe, and the final 25%, guess what, uh, Asia. So um, it's all over the, the world. Oh, interesting. But when you started, was it local? Uh, we. Uh, actually, no. We, when we first started, we, we knew reading and writing is universal. So uh, we, we knew that somewhere on this planet may take off first, we just don't know where. So in, in the get-go, we supported over 10 languages on day one, and now we support over 50 different languages. Five zero? Five zero, yeah. Wow. And how about you? Where, 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 did, where did this get started in terms of, was there a local start to Well Simple? Definitely, it started right here in Toronto. Um, we started in September of 2014 with just um, a spreadsheet, believe it or not, um, sort of rebalancing clients' money that way um, until we could get up and running with a fully fledged out product. Um, and right now we're only available in Canada, uh, but our aspirations are global. Um, I think it's a really good testing ground to, to, to be in Canada and learn from sort of the financial regulations that we have here, right. but also take all of our learnings um, uh, abroad and to other different markets. Yeah. This is the thing that I find most fascinating. I've gone to um, 10 NUCOs uh, in the last uh, 10 months in different cities around the world, and you just stumble into these startups that, you know, in Istanbul, there's a startup that's doing an on online, like they're basically trying to kill Quicken, you know, QuickBooks, Intuit, all of that. There's like four people in a basement in Istanbul who think they can beat Intuit. Um, and you know what? They might. You know, I mean, it, Google was, you know, two guys when there were already 10 search engines. Um, and that mission that you, that you mentioned to organize the world's information and make it accessible has been the mission almost since the very beginning. Yeah. Um, I'm curious for all of you, what, what do you see happening in the next three to five years that's going to most dramatically change either your business or you think the way people interact with business? Um, I think it's going to be the way um, users interact with technology. So to date, you've had laptops or computers, but um, and, and obviously in the last three or four years, everything is driven off of a, a mobile phone, um, and that's transformed things. But I can't wait to see what's going to happen over the next three to five, because I think it's going to be a combination of a little bit of this, a lot of wearable technology, but I think you're going to talk to everything. I think you're going to be talking to your phone, you're going to be talking to your laptop, uh, and um, with artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, these devices are going to learn behavior and they're going to assist you uh, in every step of your life. So, um, I mean, it's, it's a great time to be alive. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, what do you say? Uh, yeah, the uh, internet, especially, especially the mobile internet, is the first technology that can connect billions of people all for free, all at once, in real time. So uh, this is, uh, on, we are only 10, 20 years into this internet thing, and especially mobile internet is perhaps five or so years. So we are very, very early in the cycle, but we have already seen the, the power, and the power is shifting back to the end users in a way the, uh, in my context, is, uh, we, we are an entertainment company. Uh, the, what's, who is going to decide what's popular, what's not popular, is no longer controlled by the big media companies, is shifted back to the audience. And for us, we are a platform to help service those uh, really popular content or, or stories, but we, we don't make the decision. Right. It's our end users, they make the decision. Have your end users surprised you by inventing new forms, or you know, what's been something that's happened on, on Wattpad that you're like, well, I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah, there, there are um, many, many examples. I, uh, I, I can pick one or two. Um, we, we start to see people sometimes writing in text message format. You know, you would never see this in the traditional publishing industry. And you would also see people um, writing 
uh, real person fan fiction, imagining you know the Taylor Swift or Justin Bieber, they uh, you know they are dating or having dinner, <laughs> and you know th it doesn't happen in in real life, but people can use their imagination to kind of entertain themselves and for other audience as well. That did not exist in the traditional publishing or entertainment industry. So Huda, I'm curious in your space, and you're you know, relatively new, right? Two, two years in now. There seems to be an awful lot of change. And one of the things I'm a little anxious about, and I don't know if you guys are, if any of you have stocks and you know, assets that you're watching diminish. Um, <laughs> My mother calls me every week, what are they doing to my, you know, and I'm like, I, I don't know, who's they? Um, but <laughs> she has, you know, she built a life, she was a teacher, she has her pension and she has her little, you know, retirement fund, and she's stressed out because um, she has this one guy who's her broker and this guy is, you know, has time for her whenever she calls, but otherwise I'm pretty sure isn't thinking about her. I've read about these sort of algorithmic managers. Is that part of what you do? Is that where the future is going with this? That's right. So the media really likes to call us robo-advisors, which is not, not a word that I like, because I believe that the way Wealthsimple is approaching investing is the most human form of investing. Um, we provide on-demand advice, so very similar to what um, you're describing with having financial advisors as you need them, mm -hmm. but in a way that molds and fits to your life as you need it. Could I answer your questions um, at 2 a.m.? Um, I can build a system to be able to do that. I can give you the information at your fingertips that is personalized to your investment portfolio. Um, and the way that, that we figure out our clients' investment portfolio is by asking them. Um, and by continuously keeping up a relationship with them in a way that will um, help them feel secure about their investments, where they're not stressing out, where they can you know, put away money for the future, but also enjoy the things that they like to enjoy in life um, as it stands. I think a lot of financial institutions are really big on uh, taking away the pleasures of life from people and with the promise of saving, um, saving for the long term. And, and we're, we're quite the opposite. We believe you should enjoy your life and also save for the future um, in a way that's sustainable. Sounds like a winning bet. Um, I, I'm gonna think about talent, about people. Um, the, the economy that seems to be coming is both terrifying, I mean, the idea that, you know, for example, uh, Uber is, I don't know why that came up as soon as I thought about terrifying. Um, but uh, I took an Uber here, so. Um, but I have a misgiving about it, because whenever I meet a driver who's an Uber driver, I know that they are out of a job within five to ten years. Um, and it seems that everything that can be automated um, will be automated. What are the jobs of the future? What, what are you hiring for? What do you look for when you th are hiring staff? Because adding people is certainly the engine of your, all of your growth, right? So, so what, is, what, what are the skills that we need? Or in my case, I have two college kids. What do they need to, to, to have a job in five or 10 years? I've well, you're hiring these folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think it's two things. I think it's one, um, folks that we see come out of university, um, they could be very skilled in, say, in engineering, or um, they've got great technical skill. But what really separates folks that I think can grow with the company, uh, and we're scaling significantly year after year, uh, is someone who also has a blend of teamwork, collaboration, uh, how to talk to a customer, how to talk to a partner. Uh, and those are two very different skills that I think the worker of tomorrow is going to have to have be grounded enough in some of the algorithmic thinking of an engineer, but also be able to uh, carry on a conversation and be comfortable, uh, challenge, challenge someone, be challenged back, uh, and then also work across the aisle with various different uh, functions within an organization because functions, um, organizations aren't so functional any, any longer. They, they're, they're living beings that are, that are talking about every part of the company and our best workers are the folks that can work in that very chaotic environment. So I think it has to be uh, both sides of your brain working pretty well. Hmm. What do you look for when you hire? I always 
look for the better writer. If I ever have the better, the, the better writer. Writer. Um, mm -hmm. So if I have an option between two people, I will almost always pick the one who writes better because I believe it shows clarity of thought. And the space that Well Simple is in, and um, we're currently in investing, but we want to transform your relationship with money, you're going to always be looking at new, interesting, different applications of money management. And I think it's, um, it's very narrow-minded if I were to just look for a computer engineer to write my program. Um, I, th I, I think the better writer is, is the way to go. That's what we look for. Um, and our, our quality bar is pretty high. So. As a writer, I thank yeah. you. <laughs> um, I, I'm curious, as some, you know, how many words are written on your platform in a month, do you know? Um, I don't know the, the word count, but I, I do know that uh, we have roughly half a million chapter uploads every single day. That's 15 million oh chapter uploads every month. And uh, that's more than the entire publishing industry combined that I know that. And I also know if uh, I did the calculation the other day, I print them on paperback. If I print all those 15 million on paperback, and each month we will be creating two Mount Everest. <laughs> Go up and down, up and down, you know, two times. I'm curious, since you're the expert, will you hire the written word and you, you have a platform for it? So as a writer, I guess I'm gonna ask you this. They should all write on what? <laughs> well, I should, except that I write like nonfiction, but maybe I should branch out. But um, I'm curious, is the written word going to stick around? Because my kids all communicate on Snapchat, and pretty much it's, the written word is, an, is, is sort of a decorative element, as opposed to, as a matter of fact, I was looking at my daughter's uh, uh, yearbook uh, with her friends. Uh, She's a senior, she just graduated. And there was not a sentence in the entire yearbook. <laughs> which got me thinking that I'm the dying breed here. Um, is there, are there new forms like that, that are popping out on Wattpad that are telling stories in those ways? Yeah, I, I, I think, of course, the, the world is becoming more visual. You know, we, we see more images and, and, and videos. But um, there are also studies looking at whether people are reading more or less compared to 10 or 20 years ago. In fact, I would say today people are actually reading more, not less, because of the Internet, because there's so much more information on the Internet. The only difference is on the Internet, you read very differently. And uh, asking someone to read a book like spending four hours to read a book nonstop is very, very difficult to, to ask these days. But um, if you look at Wattpad, almost all writers, they upload chapter by chapter. So every single time when they upload a chapter, we send out millions of push notifications to bring people back. And people say they're waiting in the subway. They can spend the next five, 10 minutes, 10 minutes to read a chapter. And they have to wait till the, the writer finish the next chapter. Can be next week can be tomorrow, because it, it, it doesn't exist yet. Yeah. So the, the reading behavior, writing behavior has changed. What I would say is uh, reading and writing will never change, but everything in between will continuously changing. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Um, one of the things that draws people to a company is that the company has a mission, a purpose, something you know, that people can say, oh, I want to be part of that. Um, but then when they get there, I'm curious, how do you keep them? You know, do you have any insights into how you manage people in a, in a new co, in a new kind of company, as opposed to how people are traditionally managed? Um, we, we have to remind everyone in the company constantly that we are not just a pro for profit company. You know, I'm not saying we are a non profit, we are for, for profit. Everyone knows. But we want to help people to read more. We want to help people to write more. We want to bring the written word to the entire planet. And uh, one thing that I constantly re remind my colleagues is basic reading skill can lift millions or even billions of people out of poverty. So we cannot forget that. That's the foundation of the company. So um, it's constant reminder. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. How's Google different than most companies? Oh, we only have a minute left. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I think that your, your question's a good one, and you, um, you outlined it in your very first slide, comparing new codes to old codes, um, on how you manage the knowledge worker. Uh, we talk about a little bit where you manage with a kite versus a leash. You set a bold vision, you, you outline an ambitious goal that a very smart person that you're hiring for your company can help solve, and then you just kind of let them go. And you have a few, uh, a, a few things to give them some direction, but in general, you, you have a hiring process that hopefully hires the best, uh, and then you, you set problems out there, and then you just watch folks um, thrive. And as managers, you kind of just nudge here or there, uh, but mostly get out of the way. Mm. Is that your experience as well? Yeah, um, I think to your earlier point around clients um, and the financial industry in general, um, the expectation is you won't understand anything your financial advisor says, and uh, they probably know better, and we go the opposite. So the way that we're keeping our clients with us is by making them feel like they are in control of their own money and speaking to, to them in, in a really natural English language um, so far. When we go global, there will be many languages, hopefully 50 and more. Uh, Google um, can help you with the translation. Yeah, yeah, that's true. This is basically all I need, uh, all I need to move forward. Uh, unfortunately, we just, I just got the, the flashing buzzer sign. So um, I want, please join me in thanking these guys for, for talking a little bit about it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Thank you very much. Thank you both. John, I have Thank some you. important questions for your... Oh, you do? People, Are yeah. You? Uh, Bruce, I want to know what does the G stand for? Your name is Bruce Poon Tip. What's G? Great. Great. Okay. And Alan, what is what pad? Well, I can spend an hour to talk about this, but in, in, in short, uh, what symbolizes electricity? Pad symbolizes book. So the combination is ebook. All right. I want to thank John. I want to thank Brett. It's not typical that someone would let competitors hijack their stage and their audience. But I've been trying for a long time to get Albert to talk at Idea City. And I would have had I had the opportunity of invited Alan and all the rest of you to come and speak at our stage. So thank you, Brett. Thank you, John, for bringing them here. I think Nuco is a great idea. I'm going to buy a ticket. We'll see you in September. Thank you.